In today's short video, I'm going to talk with you about a very interesting promotional tool that is being offered by the volunteers at the Vintage Tech Museum. Now, one of the volunteers there developed a tool called a curve bug. And a curve bug is really a take on a simple two terminal curve tracer, similar to the octopus that I did a video on many years ago. In fact, that video, video number 49, which I will link down below, has been viewed well over 300,000 times. So I know, I know that a lot of you have probably seen that. And the, uh, an octopus is really nothing more than a simple two terminal curve tracer, a device that puts a voltage across a device, an alternating voltage across a device, and measures the current going through it, and just traces out the basic shape of what's going on. So the curve bug is a bit of a modern take on that and actually it gives you two ports so you can actually do A-B comparisons between maybe a known good device or a circuit board and a circuit board that maybe has a problem. And the unit can also operate in two different sensitivity ranges, both of which are being shown here. So let's dig into this and see what the curve bug is. Now the curve bug consists of the hardware and the software, both of which are really simple. The hardware itself is just this small plastic box with three terminals that are labeled black, common, and red. Now as I mentioned, this is really two two terminal curve tracers in one. They share a common terminal. The black terminal basically forms one two terminal curve tracer and the common and red form the other. And the device connects up to the computer to run the software with a simple USB-C connection. Now the idea of having two two terminal curve tracers in one box allows you to do A-B comparisons between say a known good circuit board and a circuit board that's faulty. So you can probe the same nodes in both places and directly compare the curves. And that's the two sets of curves that you see here. I intentionally had two different devices hooked up when I uh, snapped this shot right here. But you can actually see a, a black trace and a red trace corresponding to the black and the red terminals. Now of course if you only have one device that you're testing you can uh, put the software into essentially a single curve tracer mode in which case just the black and COM terminals are used and the red is not used at all. Hooking up and running the curve bug couldn't be simpler. Once you install the software you simply connect it up to your PC with the USB-C cable and just run the application software. It boots very quickly and I can just maximize it to bring it to full screen. Now before we take a look at using this device, let's uh, take a look at what waveform this thing produces. You may remember from video number 49 that the principle of operation of an octopus was to put an AC voltage across a device in series with a resistor and then use one probe to measure the voltage across the device and another probe to measure the voltage across the resistor which represents the current through the combination and plot the voltage and current together on an XY plot. Now the octopus typically used a low voltage transformer, typically an old filament transformer, to give six or seven volts or so uh, to put across the device. The curve bug is really a bit more modernized and designed more for modern semiconductor electronics, so the waveform that's used is just a little different. If we take a look with the scope here, we can actually see that the waveform that is produced by this is a triangle wave. It's about 250 hertz and goes up to oh, seven or, eight hundred, or six or seven hundred millivolts positive and about minus two and a half volts negative. And there's a reason for choosing those voltages. Now of course when testing resistive devices the XY plot you'll get will be essentially a straight line whose slope is proportional to resistance where the high resistance being flatter, lower resistance being straight or up and down. And uh, when testing capacitive devices you'll see an ellipse and the width of the ellipse and the essentially the angle of it is going to depend on what the uh, capacitive reactance is. Semiconductor junctions like diode junctions and things like that will still cause uh, L-shaped curves in the resulting curves. So why are these particular voltages used? Well the theory was that the vast majority of modern electronics is relatively low voltage a lot of CMOS and bipolar integrated circuits, many of which will have ESD protection devices that uh, will activate or turn on when the voltage at the pins gets driven down below ground. So hence a 
a larger negative voltage being applied to the input of these pins, so you'll have something to look at. And then any other forward junctions you may see, you know, with the, the forward uh, uh, the positive voltage here as well. Now when the device measures the current, it measures the current again through a series resistor that's in series with this voltage and the device you're testing. And the device actually has two different resistors that are used. Is either a 4.3k ohm resistor or a 100k ohm resistor. The latter being called the weak or sensitive mode of the device. And it's a simple keystroke on the keypad to switch back and forth between the weak or sensitive mode and the normal mode. And we'll, talk, we'll show you that. Right, so let's take a look at a couple of different devices so you can see how it works here. So here's a, a 20k ohm resistor. And if I stick that uh, between the common and black terminal, I can see this, I've got a, a tilted line as you would indicate as a relatively high value resistor. If I drop down to say a 2.2k ohm resistor, let's put that between the common and black terminals, and we can see that that gives me uh, a little bit steeper line there. And now if I drop down to, let's see, I think this is a 470 ohm resistor. We stick that in there, we can see that's even a steeper line yet. With the 20k ohm resistor hooked up, let's take a look at the sensitive mode. So this is the mode where I have a 4.3k ohm resistor in series with this device. Tapping the spacebar switches it to the sensitive mode. So now I can actually see I get a much steeper line for this relatively high value resistor. So if you're testing circuits that are very high impedance and things like that, you might want to use what's called the weak mode. And that's just tapping the key, the, the, the uh, spacebar. If you tap it one more time, it actually shows both traces on the screen. So you might choose to have both of them up there because, again, you may not know what you're going to be looking at. So you get both the normal trace and the more sensitive trace. Tapping it one more time brings you back to the normal mode. Let's take a look at an ordinary silicon diode here. If we hook that up here, you can actually see the normal diode characteristic. Now I've actually got the diode hooked up, essentially reverse biased, and I can actually see the IV curve. If I turn the diode around, uh, you'll see what will happen here. That You'll start to see the knee of the curve on the other end, but because you don't have as much of a swing in that direction, we're not going to see as much of the IV, IV curve. Smaller value capacitors like this 10 nanofarad capacitor, if we kind of hook that up there and kind of see the ellipse, if we go to the sensitive mode, we'll get more of a, a circle. We can kind of see both of them there again. And that's for a 10 nanofarad cap. Uh, I think this one here is a 470 nanofarad cap. So we can see that one here. We don't really need the sensitive mode. But we're going to get kind of just this almost vertical because the impedance is actually quite low uh, for this 470 uh, nanofarad cap. And certainly something like an electrolytic cap is going to give us even almost a straight line because it's going to almost look like a short um, you know, to this 250 hertz uh, excitation voltage. Now, of course, you won't be using this device to test individual components. That's really not its function. Its function is to really help you identify faults on an assembled circuit board. And I should caution you that it's on a circuit board that is not powered up. This is not intended to test active circuits, only to test uh, unpowered up devices and boards to look for signatures of various nodes on the board. And as we discussed in video number 30, not 49, the ideal thing is that you would have a known good circuit board and then the faulty circuit board so you can compare you know, the traces that you get on the same node between the two devices. In the old, uh, with the single octopus, you'd have to switch the probe back and forth between. But here with the, with the curve bug, we've actually got two probes so we can see both traces at the same time. To activate the second trace, uh, we simply hit the S key. The S key will toggle between the single mode, which is just showing the black trace, and hitting the S key now might be tough to see, but now I've got both a red trace and a black trace corresponding to the two probes. So hitting S back and forth will toggle between the single or dual mode of operation. The default operation when it powers up is in the dual mode. The only other control in the software is the letter P, which just pauses it, which will allow you to take screenshots and things like that. So again, if you're going to use a device like this, maybe in a, uh, a production area, you might choose to take some screenshots of what each node should look like. So when you've got somebody debugging something, they've got some things to compare against. 
Now using the device is quite simple. I have the common connected to ground on my circuit board and I have a probe connected to the black terminal. I put the software into the single mode with just the black trace showing. Now if I touch the probe to ground, I see the expected vertical line for a short or very low resistance. Now if I connect up to say this decoupling capacitor over here, I see a little bit of an ellipse. It's a relatively large value capacitor, meaning you can see it's a, a, nearly a straight line instead of tilted, but I can tell it's a capacitor because of the kind of the ellipse shape that I get instead of a solid line. Now if I move over and probe this terminal over here, I see something that is basically largely a straight line, or a tilted line I should say, which indicates a relatively low resistive value, but not zero. So what it means I'm looking at is actually the termination resistance of a high-speed bus that's on this board. Now of course this bus is differential, so I could probe one side and then probe the other. Be sure they both match. Um, so that's a, a good way to kind of you know maybe test some things. Or if there are other buses that are similar on the board, you can probe them and look to expect to see about the same signature. Another interesting node to connect up to is this one here. And here I can actually see a junction being turned on. So I know I have a semiconductor junction, so I'm looking primarily into an integrated circuit. But I also see a little bit of a separation of the trace here, which tells me there's a slight capacitive component, or possibly even an inductive component to it, that's storing some charge. But again, the actual shape isn't that important. But again, you may have other nodes that are similar. Like again, this is part of a differential circuit. So I probe the other one. You want them to look kind of the same. If you had a difference between those, it might indicate that one side is, is damaged. Similar to this, this node over here. You know, I've got a, just a slightly different uh, shape on that one. It's a different circuit I'm looking at. So kind of knowing what you'd expect to see on a known good circuit, okay, and then comparing similar circuits to see if the signature is the same is a real good way to help isolate faults. Now because there's a lot of things on a circuit board, you're not just looking at a partic one particular pin, you might be looking at a combination of components, sometimes you will just see traces that look you know, like a combination of things. Like if I go this one here, I see a junction being turned on, but I also see a relatively high value resistance here, because that, that is not flat, it's tilted up a little bit. So actually what you see isn't as important as recognizing the fact that every node will have its own signature to it, depending on what you're probing. And then uh, as, you get, as you're testing devices, particularly in production, you will learn what nodes are expected to look like for that, for that particular device. And then recognize that if that node looks different, that might indicate where your problem is. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this device is offered by Vintage Tech. Now, Vintage Tech is a volunteer organization that is actually on the Tektronix campus in Beaverton, Oregon. And it's the Museum of Tektronix Equipment, but they also do restorations of equipment uh, for the museum itself, as well as provide a wealth of resources for those of us that like to use and restore old uh, Tektronix equipment, and just to kind of preserve the history of Tektronix. Now the proceeds of the Curvebug device are all going to support the museum's efforts. So if you just go to Vintage Tech, that's uh, vintagetek.org slash curvebug, you'll get to this Curvebug page. And this has all of the details uh, for the Curvebug tool, as well as uh, some pictures of the device, a description of what it is, uh, the manual, a link to the PDF manual for the device, as well as a link to the software. And then uh, some videos on how to use the device. The device is sold on their eBay store. Now I'm not going to give you the link to the device because once they, they do a production run they'll put a link up there and they will sell these devices for just, just under $40 US. And Once they sell out they'll do another production run. Uh, the link will be taken down until that production run is ready and then they'll put another link up there. So if it is something you're interested in just go to eBay and search for Curvebug. So I hope you enjoyed this look at this really interesting two-channel octopus device called a Vintage Tech Curvebug. Uh, really interesting device if you're doing any kind of servicing, if you're testing uh, parts in a little mini production run and looking for faults and things like that, it could be a really, really handy debug tool. I'll put a couple of links in the description down below for the Vintage Tech uh, webpage as well as to the previous video that I did on the Octopus number 49. Anyway, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Thanks again as always for watching and check out the Curve Book.